Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. It is 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and let's get started. Can I please have a quick sound check before we begin? I just want to make sure that everybody can see the screen and also you can hear my voice. Perfect. Let's, just, let's get started with the economic releases for today. Today is day one of FOMC meeting. Tomorrow we will have the conclusion at the FOMC uh, press conference uh, and uh, also the rate decision, everything that is coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern and 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but until then, uh, we do have uh, capacity utilization rate uh, and that is coming out right now at 9.15, so the number should be out. Uh, and before this, we had the Empire State Manufacturing Index and the import prices at 8.30. No other relevant uh, economic release will be reported uh, into the end of the day. Major, other major news in terms of stocks and market movers, uh, NVIDIA is back in the news. Apple will have its product launch. Uh, and uh, other than that, this is pretty much it for today. So we're gonna be watching smooth sailing into the FOMC meeting. Let's begin with the chart analysis for, um, for the day. First of all, we had a continuation higher into the Dow in the overnight trading session, uh, passing uh, over that 28,000 mark that we discussed into yesterday's trading. The S&P is up 0.90%, 30 points to the upside. NASDAQ is up a point of 0.3, 30 uh, percent and uh, 146 uh, points to the upside, 14 points up in Russell, close to 1% up as well. So we do have one index that carries a little bit more relative strength. We do have some components, like I said, NVIDIA and Apple, uh, big components, uh, also Amazon. Uh, some of the components uh, within this index are moving uh, pre-market and this is creating the velocity for higher. Uh, we also have uh, a nice blend of strength into all the indices that are very close to executing uh, weekly rotations. This is going to be extremely bullish for the pattern should this happen. So uh, I'm going to take uh, right now, um, take it to the big charts and start analyzing uh, each index with the levels that we will have for the trading session today and onwards. Uh, please give me just a heads up and let me know if you guys can see the chart that I have displayed right now. Uh, it is the chart of Dow. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. All right, so this is the chart of the Dow. Yesterday we had a pretty chop festy kind of day in the terms of that uh, day. It was not a day trader's paradise because it was just very choppy. Uh, we mentioned that we are trading into a higher uh, velocity. What that means is that institutional moves are still uh, buying and they're still looking for longs. Uh, so we did have the discussion about no shorting um, into the uh, session yesterday. And uh, we did have the Friday low. We did have a higher low into the overnight trading session um, on Monday. And we finally made it above this congestion high. Now what happened in yesterday's trading session, we pretty much had a straight move up into 10 a.m. And then we had a consolidation into the rest of the trading session, testing multiple levels uh, throughout the intraday was total chop fest for the day traders. The bigger time frame traders had the upper hand and this is uh, something that I have noticed uh, happen in the market uh, yesterday and not only yesterday, but last week that the bigger image is forcing the, uh, not only the setups, but it's forcing the uh, velocity uh, still uh, into the swing 
and longer term trading. So therefore, we do have a double bottom formation into the 27,300 zone. We also have the weekly low into the 200 zone, and we had a nice pop over this spot. Now, this is resistance at the 170, between 150, 170, and 200. This is a really massive resistance spot right here. I'm expecting that after this continuation higher that we have had in, the all, in all the overnight trading sessions, so basically since last night at nine o'clock, since we pulled back from the breakout and then uh, going into the London session where we have consolidated for three to four hours before massively breaking out, this was a very nice trade for those of you that are trading the overnight session. We can expect continuation higher, like I said, into the 28,150 uh, to 160. And again, this is gonna be the cluster zone right here into this 200. Any pullback into this space is going to be seen as a buying opportunity and for a projection higher back into the resistance spot that we have into the 28,400. So you can see that from 200 to 400, we have quite a nice tradable void, which is not going to be as treacherous as we had into yesterday's trading session. And we still managed to move higher. What the pattern has for it going into the trading session today is that so far we have a cluster of support into the 28,000. 28,000 represents right now the support level for ongoing movement for obviously into the 200. So what we can expect for the trading session right now is to see some kind of price pullback or price stabilizing around this spot to carry it further into the 170 and going into um, and in going into the 200. And then we're going to be looking for a continuation back into the 400. Now let's take a quick look and let's see what we have for the trading. Oh, but before, uh, before I move on to the next index, this is another heavy confluence area right here. This confluence area is also deriving from a prior pivot high that is uh, that formed onto the daily chart on um, August 11th. And we also are running into the 20 SMA on the daily chart. So for that respect, we need to consolidate this 100 spot before we move on to the 200 spot. And then here today in the New York trading session, we will have to deal between 100 and 200. We navigate safely, we break above 200, then we have room to move about 200 points higher. Let's move on to the m and &E S&P. So the m and &E S&P uh, has room on the daily to uh, project higher all the way into the 3424. From this spot, we do have about 20 point clear void into the next resistance spot. The 3424 represents an area of resistance for price. And this is also going to be uh, in sync with the daily 20 SMA. So expect price to stall between the 20 and 25 and even into the 30 area. So that becomes a congestion zone. From the weekly standpoint, we're gonna, uh, we, if we continue higher, we have another tradable void. So if we break above the 24, we may continue into the 50 zone. This 50 zone, and if we pass over the 50 zone, expect high velocity, continuation higher, shorting is not gonna be an option, we're going to continue into the 80s, 70 to 80s, and this is going to be the next spot. 70 to 80, this is going to represent that gyration zone, zone for the medium term trader. Currently in the overnight trading session, we had a pullback and a rotation with a blast off. It was not over the 80 zone, and this was uh, this happened at midnight. Look at the 80 zone right here, pop a little bit higher, regaining the 10 exponential moving average, riding higher. And we have a little bit of a lid here into the 3408 to 30, 3405 to 3410, I should say. This is a declining 200 SMA. We need to hop above it in order to transition higher back into the 20s and in order for us to get into the high velocity zone. So like I said, from this point on, we will be looking for longs all the way to the 70 and 80 plus. And we're gonna continue our transition higher back into the 3500 and even higher. 
back into these highs right here, which represent the all time highs. Uh, we're what we're trying to do right now. So uh, from the hourly standpoint, we had a high. We had actually uh, three lower highs and two uh, three lower highs and uh, two lower highs, and we were trying to establish a confirmed downtrend. The trend surely changed into a Monday session when we navigated higher. So this is Friday. And on Monday, we have the confirmation of another pivot higher. So we have the low, we have the double bottom low, we have the first higher, higher low, and we need to punch higher, execute another pullback and rotation for us to regain confidently back the uptrend onto the 1H chart. Let's move to NASDAQ. Okay. Oh, Michael. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so uh, we have a double bottom support into NASDAQ. Uh, it, the weekly chart suggests that it may transition higher. We have a high velocity zone that is coming into the 585. We also have a stall into this point because on the daily chart into this exact spot into the four, between 400 and 425, we are running into the 10 exponential moving average and that is going to slow down the momentum. If we manage to break over the 40, 440 to 450, we will have more velocity to the upside that may push the price all the way to 600 where the 600 zone becomes a little bit of a stall because it's it's tricky it's going to be a weekly rotation and it's going to hit the brakes because we're running into the 20 sma so it's going to be a little tricky like i said yesterday you know it was the trickiest uh it was the trickiest index to trade however today uh we are if we run into the six uh into this uh, space right here into the 600 this is going to be the weekly rotation which i think is going to be stronger than that 20 sma on the daily but for the intraday trader that's going to be a target because we're dealing with very small time frames all right so uh bottom line is we're still bullish and he pulled back that we regained back into the 350 or close to the 10 ema on the one inch chart uh will be seen as positive moving forward Russell is getting very close and in fact is the only index right now that is clo the closest to a weekly rotation. So you can see the high velocity uh, area into the 550-ish zone. So uh, between, between 54 and 56, uh, this is going to be the blast off or higher. Uh, the weekly rotation is happening at 53. We also have a high velocity zone into that area. The reason why the price is stalling right now, no surprise, because at 1550, we do have the 200 SM, we do have the 20 SMA into that spot. We also have minor support from prior price action from August 27th and also from September 1st that is creating resistance into the same spot of 1550. We break over that spot, we can continue into the 1560, 1580, and 1600. Let's take a look at oil, which is a little bit choppy to start the day and has been range bound for about four trading sessions. Uh, and uh, it's still trading into this massive, massive inside this massive weekly bar that we've had. Uh, still cradled by the 20 SMA on the weekly. So still holding the support right here into the 36. We have an upper support uh, close to 37. So we do have about a dollar and change band of support into the space. We don't have any confirmation for higher or any confirmation for lower range bound. We're going to leave it alone. Don't forget that today at 430, we do expect uh, oil numbers to come in. Uh, we do have the API all numbers, and tomorrow we have the EIA all inventory numbers that are coming in at 1030. Uh, last but not least, we're going to take a look at gold, and we are just about seconds away, 30 seconds away from the open. Uh, gold has uh, triggered in the overnight trading session, the bullish above area with the rotation above that I mentioned in yesterday's trading session. For those of you that are not in from 1988, from a few weeks ago, uh, this is the secondary entry. Uh, or if you would like to add a little bit more to your trade, it's not going to do much in terms of averaging your price. Uh, this is going to be the spot, the uh, 19th, this is the spot. Uh, where it happened, and it happened last night at 10 o'clock, uh, into the 1975.5. 
Uh, we're still we're trying to trend right now off of the 10 exponential moving average, shallow pullback to the 20 SMA right here. So we really need to consolidate here in order to start exploding higher. So no day trades in GC, no trades at all in uh, CL, not day trades, not swing trades. And now we're going to head back to our watch list and we're going to have to watch patiently for a pattern to develop for the intraday trader. Uh, definitely we need to look for some pullbacks that may happen on smaller time frames. So now that you know what higher time frames uh, uh, are looking, um, um, are basically, you know, uh, the look of the higher time frame and the impulse of trading from the higher time frame, we're gonna go down to smaller time frames and we're gonna watch for some pullbacks and some regains of the trend. Now what I can see from uh, from this uh, first look on the five minute chart is that uh, we have the S&P that in the overnight trading session has been following the 10 EMA and then executed a pullback and rotation at the 20 SMA level, punch a little bit higher again into the resistance spot. So we had this coil into, uh, into this prior resistance, now support for price action, and we're regaining uh, the 20 SMA. A um, bit more strong, a bit more strength into NASDAQ because NASDAQ, you can see, is just uh, establishing the wicks between 20 SMA, 10 EMA. So it's very, very flaky. So again, today the stops are going to be a little bit wider, or just for the stops. Yesterday we had some good trading opportunities in YM, but we had that really massive range bound with no continuation higher. It was indicating for a continuation higher, but the New York trading session wasn't it. So we needed to wait for the uh, afternoon trading session uh, in order to uh, explode over that massive range that we had intraday, especially on the 15 minute. And the chart was tweeted to you guys on the private feed. I know many of you took part into that trade. Uh, and uh, we have been chatting back and forth about levels and uh, targets, et cetera. All right, so with that being said, uh, let's just wait and see what this New York session is going to bring to the um, day trader. If you're new to the trading room, remember that you were sent out a video on position sizing. It is very important to understand how position sizing works in order to uh, benefit most from this room and from the calls that I make. Uh, also, uh, view that video a couple of times so you understand. Take a few days to understand what we're doing in the trading room. If you're very new, uh, you could take the trades in a paper in a, a, a paper paper trading account or simulator, or you can simulate them using one micro just to have, you know, some skin in the game and to see, uh, you know, how you do under uh, our guidance. All right, so uh, the Dow, like I said, is still stuck into that 20 SMA. It's just going back and forth. We have the first three minutes in. The two minute is really wants to punch in higher. So we have a two minute high low with a continuation, but we do have a lot of resistance into the 120 level trend that is from the New York trading session charts. We also have a prior overnight high into that spot. So that may become a pressure point from which the price may try to uh, pull back a little bit. So it's again, very tricky after we have, uh, you know, quite a very intense uh, overnight move. Uh, we did have a very nice uh, uh, doji uh, in the Dow uh, at that forum at 5 p.m. and uh, with a very nice uh, uh, inside candle, doji candle at that uh, time. We have a bit of divergence coming into NASDAQ right now that I'm seeing. It's just testing back and forth. This is part of calibration. In fact, 
uh, we are we are a little bit more volume is dripping right now into the market. Um, in the Dow, we have forty thousand contracts trading it for the December. And if you're wondering which contract we're trading, we have already rolled, uh, and we're trading the December contract. Uh, the um, September contract still has three days, uh, and uh, it still has quite a bit of volume, uh, close to 18,000 contracts traded. The MNE SMP uh, has uh, four, at this point has uh, 440,000 contracts uh, traded uh, right now, and uh, we do have, still have, still three days left, and we still have a lot of volume into the uh, September contract, 260,000 uh, contracts traded. And last but not least, NASDAQ. Uh, let's take a quick look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ has, again, uh, right now just increased a little bit. The September contract trading at 70,000, and the new contract, um, December contract, is trading at 110. Uh, Russell, uh, 39,000 contracts, over a little bit over 39,000 contracts trading for December and September, 28,000 contracts. Just a quick reminder that uh, oil is going to roll as well. And uh, the volume is still into the October contract, FYI. We still have seven days. Uh, and then we're, when we roll, we're going to be rolling uh, into the November contract. Current uh, November, and December, November and December, they're pretty close, 56,000 and almost 40,000. Uh, Boeing is ramping up uh, today uh, following that very steep pullback that it had within that range. Uh, City is having a really bad second day here. City is in the news. There was some uh, negative news that came out. And uh, I don't know if it's going to shock you or not if I tell you that Nike just make it a, made a brand new high at 120. $120 and 10 cents. I mean, Home Depot continuation higher. Uh, there have been some uh, upgrades uh, last night. Um, so far, um, I'm seeing the financials that are a bit under pressure. Caterpillar was also um, upgraded um, this morning and um, price target. Uh, it has a higher price target. I'm seeing the Dow components kind of like a little bit in trouble here. So I'm not seeing a lot of continuation uh, higher, but it's still very early, just not even the first 10 minutes. We don't even have the first 10 minutes in. So things may change uh, a lot. Um, Apple, again, Apple is higher. We all know we're there. They have the product launch today. Um, Google inside day and Apple inside day. So we don't have participation in those, uh, yet we're seeing NASDAQ right now, just uh, ramping up a little bit higher. Dow is a little bit divergent because what I just mentioned is that we're having some difficulty in some of its components. Uh, Square and PayPal are a little bit stronger. Microsoft still under a little bit of pressure. Baba as well, really wanting to contribute to this rally. Uh, Qcom as well, just really massively range bound. Massive range bound. I'm curious to see how NASDAQ is going to react here. I don't have anything just yet. We have been, um, this is actually the fourth hour uh, from uh, the rotation that happened last night. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's, uh, the four, it's the fourth bar on the four hour chart that we're uh, issuing continuation for. So correction on that.
we actually are up 13 bars since um, uh, since last night at nine o'clock. We're punching a bit higher here. NASDAQ had a little two minute, had a NASDAQ had a breakout, mini breakout pattern at 427 by 400. Uh, but it has a lot of resistance into the 435 to 446. So I think that resistance is um, doesn't play well here. So um, the risk or reward level were, were definitely very asymmetric at this point. We have five more minutes in for the 15 minute high low to set. The mini SP one hour is already trading into resistance at 3407 to 3410, which we where we have the 200 SMA on the one hour. And at this exact spot, we have a New York trading session resistance at 3408. 3407 to 3408. Just very choppy price action right now. This is, and again, you know, we've noticed this a couple of weeks ago that it's more of a swing type of market than a day trading type of market. Okay, so NASDAQ is the first to react off of that zone. The S&P needs to pull back here. Like I'm telling you guys, we, we definitely need a pullback. We had a consolidation at 6 a.m., just very shallow pullback consolidation between 6 and 7. And then we have the full blast for higher. right into that resistance spot into the mini SMP. And by the way, notice where the mini SMP, I should have held the mini, I, I should have known better instead of bailing out of mini SMP last week, last Thursday. That was a stupid, stupid move. You just wait until you, you definitely have this daily rotation uh, planted or you wait for, um, you know, like, You don't have the tolerance, you take your first stop, and if not, just stay in. I'm telling you, the less you manage these trades, the better it is. Okay, the Dow is having a bit of uh, trouble punching out higher. We're seeing, uh, I mean, look at these wicks, and the volume is still uh, low today. The S&P is finally uh, consolidating like for the, for the last four minutes uh, into that resistance spot. I don't know if it really wants to blast higher over that 09. It's gonna do like a fake out higher, like that little periscope higher to see if there are any buyers at that spot. But this is, the, if, if we're gonna get a pullback in S&P, this is the area where we need to get the pullback. 
And if it pulls back in a shallow manner to, let's watch the following areas, 3404, then we're gonna watch 3400 zone, maybe right into the 98 to 97 zone. If it trades below 04, I have no doubt that it's gonna start pulling into 3403-ish. Let's just watch and see what they have in mind. So far, what I've noticed is that, and we've noticed this, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, that the New York trading session is super choppy, chop fest at its finest. And then we had the overnight trading session that is running the price higher. So when I woke up this morning and when I checked to see where the price is, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> yeah, I actually took last night um, a trade in the Dow um, that I tweeted to you guys. It was after that, over that range. The Russell is coming in. For, uh, it should be interesting to see if we hold a 930 low to 945 low, the first 15 minute high low. Let's see if we hold it. If we violate the first 15 minute high low, we may be coming in a little bit more, but if we're not violating the first 15 minute high low, uh, we're uh, maintaining the strength. Uh, so far, Russell and the Dow are violating it, but we have two indices that are still holding it very strong, and that's the Yemeni S&P and NASDAQ. All right, so we can see that NASDAQ is holding. Um, like I said, the m and &E S&P, that 3409 resistance was quite the spot. And I'm gonna share with you what the big boys, where they took the profits, where the big boys took the profits. See this resistance spot right here? This is 09, 3409 is the high. This is the spot. And this is where they took profits, partial profits. Let's see if we're gonna get another opportunity for higher or what the case may be. So um, obviously the trend is still higher. Like I said, we're trying to regain the uptrend. So it's not gonna be easy. We do have higher time frames that are dictating a bit higher. However, we had a massive move in the overnight trading session. So now this should be the resetting for of what's to come later in today's trading session. Okay, meltdown in the Dow here. Like I said, I've noticed it was still very early, but I've noticed a little bit of weakness into the Dow stocks. NASDAQ still holding. NASDAQ may be the last one. Is NASDAQ very divergent at this point. NASDAQ may be the last one to pull back or 
may, may even go full throttle higher. All right, we actually, I actually like this flush because this can bring opportunity. Like I said, hang on tight, fasten your seatbelt because this week is going to be a roller coaster. We have quadruple witching option expiration on Friday. We have the Fed meeting tomorrow. Day one is today. The S&P still holding the first five minute high low. Price trading when within uh, the first 15 minute range. It had regained the five minute 20 SMA, like I said, into the area that we're looking at. So let's see what we have going on from here. Uh, and as you have noticed, there's no like orderly pull back or move higher right now there's this drama boom one big red, red bar down and then calibration and then boom back up or again back down so there's a, a very violent way uh that uh that trading uh that that we're tr a very violent environment that we're trading right now so even the moves are extremely violent and like I said, the mini S&P, not only that it had the lid uh, from the newer trading session um, resistance spot, but it also came in to the 200 SMA on the 1H chart. And that is why the reason why we should expect a pullback here. Now how steep or how shallow, 10 o'clock will determine whether we're gonna have the rotation into that spot. So as we're getting, we have less than 10 minutes we can probably expect a rotation. 10 o'clock comes with the first major rotation time uh, in um, on the day. Yeah, gold is just, like I said, gold, if you're into the swing, just don't even look at it because there's no use to look at it. Just leave it there. You, you know where the stops are. You know where the targets are. It's going to be a lot of drama in between. And gold is going to have, as long as, along with the indices, they're going to have massive moves into tomorrow's trading session. Massive. To the upside or to the downside, nobody knows. FOMC will dictate the move tomorrow after 2 p.m. All right, so S and P pretty uh, pretty much holding up this spot. It's uh, right now trying to engage into a two minute rotation. It actually triggered the two minute rotation. Um, so far, the five minute is not ready for any kind of trade. Um, two minute is still kind of tricky right here with this uh, RTY that is pulling back. Uh, we still have about six minutes to the top of the hour. NASDAQ not looking back. NASDAQ really in force for higher, digesting the resistance high from the New York trading session. It has the same spot into that 440 to 445. Uh, just didn't really go that much right now. 50 minute high low from the open. Um, that 20 spot. I don't see a lot of velocity here. It's still coiling into that resistance spot. So let me show you what we have here from the New York trading session so we understand why I'm, I wasn't very excited about getting 
uh, long as the other indices were short. You could see that we have, you see this dotted line right here. So we went right into it, peekaboo high, consolidation, doji high low, and now it's expanding higher. It does have room. So it's trading into, uh, into a, I would say a relatively good spot for a continuation higher, but in terms of risk, it's catastrophically wide. Okay, so it's catastrophically wide. Now NASDAQ has uh, reached the 200 SMA on the one, uh, one hour. Uh, we have a very divergent Russell at this point. I'm gonna put Russell on the one hour here. Russell just regained the 20 SMA. It should have stayed above the 10 EMA and we're getting possibly a sandwich down in the Dow. So let's be very careful here. I'm not in any trades right now. Very divergent NASDAQ. NASDAQ closing in on 200 points. Google is very strong today. Google is uh, tempting uh, daily rotation. Financials are weak, going, they're going weak into tomorrow. <laughs> Neil, where's the fast play button? I know it's just, uh, I'm telling you, like if, if, if you guys have not traded before, you know, these, um, qu uh, this quadruple witching option expiration, this is your, um, experience. You have to be extremely cautious. Yeah, congratulations, Sam. Congratulations on uh, holding Tesla. So uh, yeah, so we've been talking yesterday uh, when um, I think there was a member in this room. Hey, William, you took profits. Awesome. Good job. Oh my gosh, good job. It's right up there into the 440. Hey, Sam. Yeah, awesome. Good job, guys. 
I didn't take it. <laughs> no. Okay, but yeah, it, it, it's it was just unbelievable. Let me share with you guys the charts and with the next targets. Yeah. So Sam, 450, around 450 to 460. 450 to 460. But definitely, you know, take, I mean, if if we're going to go close strong today or in a doji, use today's low as a stop. Okay. Use today's lows as a stop. All right. Uh, let's go back to the indices. Um, I don't like the weakness in the Dow. Uh, the S&P is definitely struggling. NASDAQ is into resistance right now. So I'm going to take it back to the one hour here. I'm not going to go long here as we're having this 200 SMA on the one hour. This is going to be a stall mode. Let's see if we regain the 10 EMA. If we regain the 10 EMA, we're going to find a buy spot right here into the 400 zone. Let's uh, take these far out a little bit. Uh, See, so we popped above the 200 SMA. We proved that we could go higher and now we're regaining the 10 EMA. This is what we want for NASDAQ. Actually, the Dow actually looks good here on any consolidation, this can punch higher. And let's see, see, they're all into these 200 SMAs here. We saw Russell just break the 200 SMA higher and then pull back, it's trying to regain the 20 right now. Hard to say. Okay, the uh, the S and P, the S and P. The S and P. We could do the fifteen minute high low. It, the stop. The stop is going to be a little bit problematic. But I will point a hard stop. Um, the entry should be over that resistance high that I showed you earlier. Uh, and that would be the 30, over 3,909 for the entry. So 3,909. So if you, it could be 3,909.5 or 3,910. Not a big fan of the S&P. I would have much rather wait for something in NASDAQ. Um, S&P long, 3,409.5 or uh, 3,910 with a little bit more confirmation. The stop is going to be under 3390 3398 3398 we will adjust that and the targets uh that they will be determined by price action okay but we're going to look for a ballpark target into the 3420 3420 uh that's what we're going to be looking for 3420 we do have some resistance spots as well. And in the Dow, and the, oh, we missed that really cutie setup right here because I was typing. Um, the Dow could be 28. Twenty-eight seven, so it's gonna have about a plus seventy point stop. If you want to take it, you want to take one or the other, or you want to take half the size in ES or half the size in uh, YM. It's your choice. Make sure that you don't go full throttle in ES and full throttle in YM because it's basically the same concept. So go half and half. Um, so in, in YM, I'm gonna wait it out. In YM, I'm gonna wait it out. So let's go back to the five here. So uh, the idea is that we're still following the 20 SMA. We're going to go with the trend higher. Um, I hate the fact that NASDAQ is just off the charts right now. We don't have a trade in it. It's into mass of resistance right there. So see Russell, not, Russell is trying to regain the one hour here. It's 10.04. And this is reversal time. Five minute, just about to do a little squeeze here. I'm not going to be trading it, but it can potentially, I mean, for idea purpose, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in it. 
if we start breaking above what's the time yeah yeah okay so we do have 38 38.3.5 15 38.3.5 if we break about 38.3 or 0.5 or we can um run into the 1540 for a short for a squeeze uh the stop for this trade is going to be 34 so we need to see this doji play out here okay all right i would really like to see actually the smp not trigger and fail on the pattern because right now nasdaq which was the strongest um is basically pulling back from that 200 SMA. And why I'm just trying to coil again, came right into a pivot. Why I'm not bad here. Let's see if we get, see, I missed this turnaround here for a, for a squeeze right into this 10 EMA because I was typing in the mini SMP trade. That's why it's so great. Like if you learn how to trade, you could trade on your own, trade these setups. You see them, you take them. Five minute rotation into reversal time. Boom, no brainer. You take it. And you have your target here. Just sweet. Very, very sweet. No continuation. And Russell, not, uh, I would love to see some uh, pattern failures right here. Love, love, love. Oh, you're in, Dan? Oh, awesome. You took profit. Okay. 20 to 40, 20 points. Perfect. Good job. Exactly. Like, you don't have to wait for me. You see the pattern, you take it. Because a lot of times, you know, that's why I'm in the trading room, you know, and I have to post it. I have to do the thorough analysis on it. So I can't focus on just one index or another. All right, the trade is still active in a mini SMP, by the way. Still active. If it breaks below that 33.98, obviously it's canceled with no trigger. So today you're either going to go for super short targets, like bam, bam, you see the setup, you take it very quickly right into the target one. Or if you intend on keeping it, you have to keep the original stop because this is not the market to like really trail. You know how we did throughout the summer and when we had that really nice catalyst from earnings where we trailed it and, you know, choked it and did massive profits. This is not the time. I'm telling you right now, this is not the time. This is like heavy duty, ugly, messy trading that if you really don't know what you're doing, it's bad. All right, SMP is trying to go for a one minute and two minute rotations right here. The two minute is trying to regain uh, the 50 SMA, which is good. 15 minute range bound from the open till now. So more than 30 minutes trading in a range. Let's see how NASDAQ is going to uh, react off of this pullback from that 200 SMA. The SMP tap to the 20 SMA and zipping up a little bit. We have the tap onto the 10 EMA in NASDAQ. NASDAQ very aggressively reacting off of that spot.
And by the way, this is the number one reason why I do not short, uh, you know, really strong moves into this market. I don't like the fact that oil is pulling back because oil is going to um, create some chop. Gonna take a look at Russell right here. Five minutes is trying to rotate. We have five minutes to the 15 minute candle formation. I'm not gonna do it without the 15. I'm gonna keep this on the 15 here for the next five minutes. Okay, I'm not gonna do the five in it. See that 38.3 already um, triggered. Yeah, we're better off to wait until a better formation. We have a nice doji right now, but it's still yet not formed. It needs another five minutes into it. And we're 20 minutes away from prime time trigger time. Let's see if we have something today. We had a nice 10 a.m. reversal. The reversal actually very shallow very shallow. The market was textbook sideways in the morning, uh, 9.45, first reversal. 9.45 is the first reversal. And then we had another range into 10 o'clock. We had the 10 o'clock reversal and then right now sideways. So now if the Dow is going to break over 50 into 10.30, we're going to go higher back into the 2100. If we don't, if we don't, we're going to go back to 28,000 and possibly go for the gap fill. All right, oil react. We want to have oil in sync with the market. We don't want a weak oil here. And we have a five minute rotation in NASDAQ. I'm telling you that that NASDAQ pattern has failure all over it. We want a little bit of a flush before we actually find some trades here on either direction, high or low, long or short. I want to show you something on uh, in the Dow here on the one hour chart just before the close yesterday. Look at this bar right here from three to four o'clock. Look at this bar from low to the breakout level. Okay, from support to the breakout level. And we have this support level is from prime price action. Okay, so it tested support back to resistance. <laughs> It's, it's just unbelievable the way it reacted. So it eliminated like all the longs and shorts, just washed everybody out. Yeah, the five pin is choppy. Let's move on to the 15 here.
All right, it's 1015, like we're seeing a failure in the pattern. And uh, especially NASDAQ, because NASDAQ has not reacted. NASDAQ is a late, has a late reaction off of this spot right here into the 200 SMA. Tap, tap, boom. Okay, now we have to see how these indices are going to calibrate from here. Let's check out the 15. Okay, interesting. Back into the 10 EMA. Let's put this on the 15 as well. All right, so we're getting a bit high. Um, Russell is still under pressure here. No trades yet. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the room. Still waiting. Uh, the Dow actually 15 minute rotation here, but struggling with this 20 SMA. We may have, so I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on the mini SMP trade. The mini SMP trade is intact, so it has not violated the parameter. It stopped still holding. That's the trigger. It's range bound on the one, two, five, 15 minute. And it's just like NASDAQ, it has tapped into that 200 SMA on the one hour. What I'm looking for right now, and that's going to be my watch, is going to be NASDAQ. Uh, but NASDAQ uh, needs more time. So I'm going to look at NASDAQ exactly at 1030, not now, exactly at 1030. Oh, uh, Neil. Dow is long gone. Dow is long gone. It had this 15 minute rotation. I didn't like the fact that it was struggling in this uh, 20 SMA and now running. Like I said, I would rather, you know, if I'm not sure and if the parameters are not exact, I would rather miss a trade than have a loss in a trade. Why is holding very nicely off of the 10 EMA and so is the MNE SMP. They're nice, smooth trades right now. These two, these two indices, the MNE SMP and NASDAQ are in focus. <clears throat> NASDAQ has a pocket of air, FYI, to the 400 spot. In fact, to the 380, I think it wants to complete that and it wants to kind of fill that pocket of air before it does anything. Do you see the first 15 minute high low? We're still trading into the first 15 minute range here, which is good because this is a picture of strength. We break above, we continue higher. So this is pretty much what we're gonna be looking for, this void to about from 10 to 20. Um, and this is contingent on us not violating the 98. This is where the 98 is. It's kind of tight, but we're gonna apply the 98. We break below 98. We still have a very tight support into the 96, 95, 94 zone. 
Look at this massive range that we had in the overnight trading session for a couple hours. Not easy trading, like I said, not easy trading. All right, so NASDAQ is continuing its trajectory lower here. Not short material. You can see that the Dow is already trading into a 15 minute rotation. The S&P has not broken out and is not doing any kind of pattern because it's range bound. We finally tapped into 200 SMA and we're pulling back here. And we have two that were the weakest, the Dow that actually pulled back more than NASDAQ and the S&P. So we do have the common denominator, the rush down into the Dow, the rush down into Russell and the first ones that are executing the 15 minute rotations. of the London pullback in NASDAQ? Mm, I would say uh, if we get into the 370 to 380 area, yeah, that would be it. Hey, Doji Gal, yeah, sound is on. Yes. I'm on the mic. All right, one hour rotation. It seems that NASDAQ wants to do a one hour rotation. If uh, NASDAQ is breaking 95. And let's see if, there, if, it, if it's gonna be breaking 95. <sighs> let's see. Uh, it's gonna come in a little bit more.
Okay, so cancel the mini SMP. Cancel ES trade for now. If we get a pullback, uh, I would like like a non-drama kind of pullback, not a big red bar, but a gradual pullback, we may get some better entries. In uh, during this week and going into Monday, this is going to be that the toughest uh, to trade. Like I said, the surprise that the quad week is bringing is always um, something that traders the least expect. <laughs> Pelosi, why well, she's not doing her hair? <laughs> okay all right okay thanks for the heads up jamaica All right, some tails. Stay tuned, guys. We may have some trades. We're just about two minutes away from the prime time. Trigger time. Prime time, trigger time. NASDAQ, five minute rotation off the 200 SMA can potentially be 11,425. So 425 by 394. Not bad. Let's just wait for that. Let's do it, guys. NASDAQ long. Four twenty five by three. Let's do three ninety five and then we can adjust it to three ninety four. Three ninety five. Okay, get ready. Put your orders in four twenty five. We have a bit of divergency until we get over thirty. So we're going to have a first target into 30, which is going to be a do or die. If we get over 30, we're laughing. If we don't get over 30, then we're crying. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so 30 is going to be tar target number one. Let's put it on the five because we're playing the five here. Okay. All right. So we have just uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I was saying we, we, we just triggered. I'm trying to calculate the targets here. So yeah, 430. If we're going to 430, the next target is going to be 437. So 37. We're going to take baby steps in this. 37. We have 40 and 45. We have 40 and 45. 
and And 39 can represent an ad with the same stock with the target into for this time around into 450. So these are additional targets 450, 460, 470. Plus, I don't know if it's going to go higher. We'll see. All right. So if we're getting some rotation points. These are it. This is a five minute rotation as you can see here with the trigger. So we had one, two, three, four, five down, right into a minor support zone, into the 400, also uh, into a heavy confluence area, whole number, 50 SMA, like you have like multiple odds of rotation here. Uh, we had the rotation candle, this is the entry candle for us, and uh, we need to, like I said, we, that 28, 29 to 30 is the problem area. If we, we break above that, then we're good. If we don't break above that, it's going to be a stop out. And it's always, don't forget that this is day one of, of, of the FOMC meeting. There's no telling of what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And what they're gonna be coming up with. So again, this week, you're gonna encounter more stops than usual into, uh, into trading because there's the unknown that is coming from the quadruple witching option expiration and also coming in from the FOMC. Started today, tomorrow it's gonna to be the continuation. I like the way Russell held so far, but it's into a massive resistance here into the 42, 43 area. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a pop a Rooney into oil here. Let's check it out on the 30 minute. 30 minute rotation, but a rotation is coming right into this 10 EMA, which I hate when this happens because this is really a stall into this point. We really need to get it a little bit above here. And NASDAQ has a hard stop. NASDAQ, hard stop. It's just set it and just autopilot. Very fleecy, very flaky. NASDAQ has been like this uh, during this whole pandemic. Um, I was just reading earlier that, and I don't know if you guys are on Facebook or not, but if you have a Facebook account, you probably have noticed that, <laughs> you know, it's just so funny, uh, that, you know, starting yesterday with all the chatter about, uh, you know, climate change, wow, Facebook on top of it again, you know, when you launch your Facebook page, you have a big climate information. 
So uh, it just came right now. It just aired right now that Facebook announced last night. It launched a new information hub to provide its users with science-based information. And this is quote unquote about climate change. It said a link to the hub will appear when people search for information related to climate change. I wasn't looking for climate change. You saw that, Michael? I wasn't looking for climate change. Okay. I think that there's uh, you know, like someone else should take care of climate change. I'm totally not interested in the climate change whatsoever. Uh, and um, it just popped. So you don't even need to look for it because it's already there. So they're making sure that everybody's seeing it. I mean, it's just so funny how they're forcing stuff on us. Like, I really don't like that. Anyway, so target one achieved into that 30. <laughs> Larry, money, penny. Oh, yeah, fall is coming. You got to click here. <laughs> click here, fall is coming. That's true. Okay, come on. We need to sustain that 30. We need to sustain and blast over that 30. We had a high of 37 which was the second target, by the way. So we had two targets achieved and we, we really, I'm really looking to see if we can sustain that 30. We didn't have a big target into 30 and 37, just uh, five points and then another seven points from that target one. And uh, if you guys, are interested in seeing the momentum and see why that tail has happened. It's like, there's no surprise. There's nothing surprising. Look at it. Right into the dotted line. Dotted line. Here are the suits. New York trading session. Institutional traders took the little profit into 37. Right on the very dot. Take a look. We came right into the 437. That's where we got our target from, New York trading session. And we're looking for a continuation higher into this prior high. So no, no surprise right there where we're getting our targets from. All right, so. Keeping tabs on multiple markets and on multiple charts. Okay. Let's put it on the 15 because I don't want to watch this junkie price action. We're really fighting very hard to maintain this 15 minute high low here. The last 15 minute high low from uh, 1015 to 1030, which was the prime time trigger time for it. So now the next spot that we need to take out is 39 to 40. If we take out 39 to 40, we can continue higher. As usual, take some profits, right? I don't need to tell you this, but take some profits into targets always, especially this week, especially this week. I still have the original stop. After I scaled out at target one and two, like I said, we have two more targets, 40 and 45. I don't know if we're going to reach that spot, but the stop has not changed. We still have the same spot because the market is extremely volatile. Extremely volatile. So always be hands-on. Always be hands-on. And by the way, take a look at oil. Because I was watching the insane charts of NASDAQ and oil. Take a look. It came right to this dotted line. And then, you know, it just pulled back a little bit. Here it is. Back into the 10 EMA. Keep a hard stop. Keep a hard stop. 95. And we are out right now. 95. So the rest of the position, we took profits into target one and two. The last slot stopped. Where's the original stop and it stopped out.
it's back into the 20 SMA five minute New York trading session charts. The SMP is still holding the 3400 zone. Hey, Dan, no other releases today. So uh, we don't expect any news announcement today other than, you know, the regular pop up, whatever we can, whatever we have. I know, I know it's incredible <laughs> how it came right to our second target. I'm telling you, it's if the uh if the algos. Just the chop fest again. All right, we're back into a uh, minor support zone into NASDAQ right here. Russell still holding divergence galore. Russell's still holding. There we go. It's 1045, brand new 15 minute candle.
So this tells us a lot that we haven't had the 15 minute rotations. Uh, take a look here. We actually had a quick rotation here on the 15 minute that failed. We actually had a five and a 15 minute continuation here, Doji that failed. And we're just back and forth. Here's the breakout from the overnight back into support right here. And rotation here. Let's take a quick look. Let's see. If we're going to do some scalps, don't expect them to be typed in the trading room because I want to take them and uh, I don't have the time to, uh, if they're going to happen fast, they're not going to be typed in. Uh, just a quick check, guys. Uh, I just want to make sure that you can see the screen, the six charts. Okay, thanks so much. Hey, Randy. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, yeah, the, the screens are fine. Okay. Yeah, Google is weak, Broadcom weak. I mean, weaker, they're still positive, but they're not that strong. You mean the SMP bouncing off of that spot. See, this is very frustrating because this is not my style of trading as I don't like to use hard stops and I like to add. On an environment like this, we're closing in on a five minute rotation. Let me take these to a five minute back into the five minute here. They're washing out the stops guys. They're washing out the stops today. Five minute inside NASDAQ. And we have a five minute road. Oh man, this is just terrible. Yep, it's not for the hard stop and the for that whole shebang thing. You need to have like, um, be prepared like to scale in, like use three to four lots on days like today. And I think this is what we're going to do tomorrow. Use three to four lots on trades. Not one or two, but three to four. 
I don't even know if we're, uh, and by the way, on Friday, we're probably going to have a lecture on position sizing because uh, I don't, I don't trade option expiration in general, but we're going to watch the market. If the market is going to line up something for us, we're going to be trading. If not, we're going to do a lecture on position sizing because we haven't done it in a while. And um, that's going to be the day. And then tomorrow, FOMC, again, if we have a trade early in the first hour, fine. If not, we're done. The hourly charts are ugly and messy. They don't indicate directional bias. And that's the reason why we're going to, we're just balancing back and forth. Okay, let me just check the two minute. <clears throat> I don't see anything here. It, everything is just super chop. Hmm. Do you guys want me to teach you how to scalp? I don't see any trades, honestly, right now. Hey, Ricky, sure. I'm still watching because I still wanna see if I could capture a trade. Okay, take on your simulated accounts, guys. Take out your simulated accounts. Scalping, yes, scalping 101. I don't see any high odds environment. Okay, take your simulated accounts up, okay? I'll give you guys like a minute to pull them up. Um, let me pull mine up too. Okay, let me know if you guys are ready. Just give me a one when you guys are ready. Have you pulled up your SIM accounts? Okay, so this is education. Does not represent a real trade. I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. Okay, I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done because, okay, and if we see a trade that matches our criteria, we're gonna take it in for real, okay? But I wanna show you how to trade momentum. Okay, and how to scalp. Okay, let me just, because I pulled up my SIM. Uh, pick the index. Guys, you pick the index. You pick the index. Pick the index. What do you want to trade? NQ, NQ, NQ. Okay, five NQs right here I have. Okay, let me just put it to NQ. Let me just uh, share, the, uh, share the other screen, the simulated account. This is the SIM. And this is NQ, okay, NQ. But hold on, because we may be getting a trade in it in about five minutes or so. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We may take a real trade. Okay, we have an inside. Let's watch this. So now the trigger would be, hold on. The trigger right now, is over so it's still intact over that 37 our uh, our last target so the trigger is over 37 the stop is actually right now into the 360 so you see what the institutions did they zoomed out the risk okay they zoomed out the risk okay so right now the entry is 38 until we break until we complete this candle in about four minutes Okay, so we're gonna watch it. Okay, let's go to some scalp Rooney zone. Okay, so see, this was the scalp here. 
okay but you have to be like okay let me know if you guys want nq or mnq or whatever it is okay you want a full size or the micro you want the full size or the micro okay full size full size it is Just watch what I'm doing back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to go through time frames back and forth. Wow, price is really fast, really fast. Okay, and Jelly, uh, make sure that you have your simulated accounts up, your, your sim up, and you can use micros for this. I have so many requests for the full size. I'm going to do the full size. Three minutes to the top of the hour. So you can see my time frame here for the scalp, right? It's one minute, two minute. Okay, it's one and a two minute. See what I was looking for here. I was looking at the parameter high and low. I was looking at the momentum. This would have been a short had this 10 EMA not be here. Okay. Had this 10 EMA not be here. We don't have a pattern yet. So we had pullback continuation higher. Let's see if we're going to get this blast up into the 14 or we're getting, getting lower here. Very choppy market, very choppy. Going to buy at 15. And this is what uh, you're going to go in and out, in and out, probably add a few times, okay? Going to go in at 15. One minute to the top of the hour. And by the way, that 15, 15, guys, 15. 15 is a 15 minute rotation. 15 is a 15 minute rotation. Okay, we're in long. Uh, by the way, by the way, 19 is going to be the trigger for a 15 minute inside rotation and not with the target at 40. If you want to take it in your real account. So over 19, 19 with a continuation into 40. Okay, 19 into continuation into 40. Man, this is so choppy, doesn't, so there's no price action, guys. No price action. The support for NASDAQ is 350 and 360. Yeah, 15 minute, 15 minute is good here. Even 420 if you get it. Uh, and this is uh, 360 for the target, uh, 360 for the stop. Uh, target is going to be 440, 450. 
460 back into the high into the 470. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. In the meanwhile, no momentum here. Still no momentum. May want to turn around here. Let's see. 400 still support. 400 still support here. Do you guys, can you guys see the sim right here? Okay, cool. Okay. So still no momentum. We picked one without a momentum. No, uh, nor I don't use any indicator. It's our eyes and price action, where the price is trading at. It's our eyes and how the price is trading on the one minute, on the two minute. Who is in control at every single segment of the time? No, you don't need any special indicator to read the momentum. You just read price action. Okay, you just read price action. Who's in charge right now? So this candle started forming right now at 11.02, right? It's a two minute chart at 11.02. So it's green. So it's a momentum dominated by buyers. We trade above this high of 421.75. Bam, we're going higher. Okay, see the momentum? Follow along, follow along. This is fun, okay? All right. So uh, just wait for this momentum, nor just feel free to ask questions. Buyers in control, buyers in control, buyers alert, buyers alert, okay? So we have to wait until the completion into another 40 seconds left, 40 seconds. The buyers are still in full control. Buyers are still full control. Buyers in control. Buyers in control. I was hoping this to be more of a scalp. This is not a scalp. Okay. Buyers still in control. We got 10 seconds left. We have a high of 13. Five seconds left. High of 35. I'm sorry. <laughs> 30. Okay. We have a new high of 31. If we break above 35, we're gonna continue the momentum. So what do we need to see? A print of 36. 35 and a half of 36 is gonna continue momentum back into this resistance. What's this resistance? 37. Let it go, 37. Here we go, we're getting the momentum. Okay, Noor, okay, we're getting the momentum. Like I said, 37, we need to see a print over 37 right now to take out this high if we see the print over 37, two to three ticks higher, then we're gonna issue continuation for higher. If not, we're gonna get into the pullback phase, okay? So as a scalper, typically when you reach resistance, you sell, okay? You're done, right? Because you're trading off a two minute time frame, even though the entry was a little bit late, okay? So 37. If we get a break over 37, then we're gonna continue higher. The next resistance is gonna be into the 40, okay? And here we go. We broke over, this is moment. You don't need any special indicators, guys. And this is my point. Price action is enough for you to take any smart pertain decisions. You don't need any other crapiola on your charts, okay? Now, look at the time. What's the time? 11.05.26, 30 seconds into the next wrap of this candle. So we're gonna look for momentum higher. What's the high? 38.5. So we need to make new highs, new highs, new highs to sustain the momentum. Bam, we have the 40s. And by the way, I'm in the live trade as well, the one that I typed right here, but this is the momentum trade that I'm doing. All right, so we're going higher. We have a 42 and a half high, and we have about five seconds left into this candle completion. Two seconds, one second, bam, new candle. We need to break above the high to sustain the momentum. We need 42 and a half print or higher. Do we have it? 
You bet we do. We had a high of 44. Okay? So we need to sustain the momentum, momentum, momentum. All right? So that now we're going to deal with the 40s. Remember, 40 was a target, also a pivot that we mentioned before. We have perfect five minute rotate, 15 minute rotation here. So now you're going to ask yourself, what am I going to do right now? How am I going to trail? Am I just going to bail out? No, you're going to apply a trailing process because you ran into that massive resistance into the 40s. If you didn't take profit into 37, you can move your risk. You can move your stop into the 37 and take profits into the 37, or you can trail somehow. You can see that you have a bubble of air between or the price is trading and the 10 EMA, right? So the odds are that you're gonna get a pullback right into the space. So now you're measuring one minute, one minute, one minute, 37, flatten, you're out. Okay, this is momentum. Was this useful? And by the way, that 15 minute is still ongoing. That 15 minute is still ongoing. And then by the way, target one was achieved in the real trade. Okay, yeah, but you have to be, and here's the thing, you can't, I can't do this in the trading room, this momentum style because nobody's gonna be able to keep up. It's super fast. It's super, super fast. Uh, sure, Eddie, uh, the targets are, uh, the next targets are 50, 60, 70. Okay, 50, 60, 70. Let's see if we get a pullback, we're gonna get back in on the Momo. Okay, but this was the momentum. Usually when you're scalping, you reach your target, you're done. Okay, bam, 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 you're done. Okay, but you have to have a really good grip of what's happening in the market. Now, NASDAQ, uh, I don't have levels here because obviously I don't trade this account, uh, but NASDAQ, let me show you something here on the 15 minute. Okay, let me take this uh, extended hours off. Why? Okay. So see, uh, see this pivot right here. Remember we had the same struggle with the forties and this is just New York trading session. Okay. We need to trade above that pivot. Okay. Let's see if we have another scalp rooney here. Go back here. Let's go to the one minute. What did I say? The one minute's hitting resistance is probably going to pull back to the 10 EMA right here into the 29. If we're getting a consolidation here, then we may pop higher because you have to watch the momentum, momentum up, momentum down. But when you're scalping, you got to be ready to go in and out or to add to your trade. You know what I mean? So the high here was the highest point. We have 44. So if it trades over 45, we're going to have momentum higher again. So let's position for 45. Last position for 45. And then you wait. Uh, hey, Skip, the love. If you scroll back, the trade was called at 11.01. If you scroll back, 11.01. Okay, 11.01. This is the same. I have it in, on my other screen. Okay, so momentum is on. We're off to the races again. Uh, you can see that this stall made the 10 EMA catch up to price. Okay, catch up to price. So we're trading now again, and we're off to the races. Okay, let's shrink because we want to see the charts. Okay, we have a next resistance spot into the 50. And by the way, guys, we have 49 and a half print. 50 was our second target into NASI, NASDAQ. Okay, so we have 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, this is Momo again. Guys, this is a one minute chart. Okay, one minute chart. 50 is a big deal right here. 50 is a big deal. We need to trade over 50. 
currently 49 and a half or the high. 49 and a half or the high. We need to maintain the momentum. Let's zoom out these candles. Let's blow them out so we can see the momentum. You don't need any special indicator, just your eyes and your eyes on the charts. Okay, still consolidating right here. We do have a support level into the 35. You can see it right here, right into this 10 EMA and into this uh, little bitty range right here, okay? Watch the momentum, bears in control, bears in control, solid red on the one minute, solid, solid red on the one minute. Let's go to the two. This is your zip code, by the way, this is your zip code. Now, if you want the momentum to continue, you need to see a print of 50. You see the print of 50, it's gonna go to 60, okay? And you're scalping, scalping, scalping. You're watching momentum. Who's in charge right now? Nobody. It's just a big topping tail, right? Just a little bit of tiny green right here. You're not having, you're looking at the time. It's 11, 12, and 30 seconds. We have 30 seconds into the wrap of this candle. 30 seconds, kind of like a doji. Remember, momentum is very, very quick. So if we trade below this low of 37, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to go into that 35, most likely into the 10 EMA. There are no unknowns. Paul, I don't. Because you're trading really small time frames and you have to go like with whatever the chart is telling you to do. That's why I'm not doing this, um, you know, in the trading room. I do this on my own sometimes. But no. All right, so we have a brand new candle right here. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We have, uh, it's 11.13. Yes, we have a brand new, uh, brand new minute that has just started and the momentum is still intact. Uh, the one minute, going back to the one minute, let's check out the Momo on the one minute. Doji, if we trade above this Doji high, which is 44, bam, higher. Go, 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 go. 50 is the big deal right here. We break over 50. And by the way, in the, our real trade, target two is achieved. So don't forget to take some profits out right there. Okay. All right. Now we really need to sustain the momentum and trade over 50. We need 50 and a quarter, 50 and a half, and we're going higher. 50 and a quarter, 50 and a half, and we're going higher. So you're in and out, in and out. You're reading momentum. Russell is pulling back, by the way. Okay, what's the momentum here? Topping tail. So sellers got control over this domain. We open, we opened a little low right here. This 10 AMA is still holding. If you wanna protect your profits, you could use, you could do two things right now, depending on your, uh, depending on how much money you have in your account, depending on how much you wanna risk, okay? You could use a stop of 35 and you could then look for another momentum trade. So 35 can be your cutoff line right into this point and uh, let the momentum guide you. So again, now we need to see the price over 50, all right, in order to gain the momentum. What's the momentum now? Still positive, still positive. We're still holding support into the 35, okay? Still support into the 35. You're watching it, you're watching it, you're watching it. And by the way, when you're scalping, flatten is the best option when you want to exit the trade. Boom, you're out, okay? That, that's the way I do it, at least. That's the way I do it. It's your choice whether you want to scroll down, put your stop at 35, or if you want to put the stop at 35 or whatever you want to do. All right, we're getting a massive consolidation here for the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 minutes, 11 minute consolidation here. Now go back to the five because you have this consolidation for a long time. You're watching the low on the five minute momentum. The five minute momentum low is 36. So if we trade below 36, odds are we're gonna come back to 28 and then you can decide. Am I going to take the, if I, am I going to trade, if I'm, am I going to put a hard stop at 35 or am I going to let it pull back? And then at the next rotation, I'm going to add to my trade. This is optional. This is something that you will decide for yourself what you need to do. 
So, um, and this is depending on how comfortable you are and how accurate you are at reading the market. If you're really good at reading the market, then you have no worries. You're going to add, you're going to, you know, stay in. You could, you could become very flexible with the chart because the price is going to dictate to you what you need to do. Okay. So let's, let's, let me show you an example with adding. Okay. So reading the momentum, lower, lower, lower. So, or let's say, you know, you just looked out the window and then you can, it's like, oh, okay. So I'm trading below my stop right here. So it's time for you to, uh, it's time for you to decide what are we going to do? And by the way, in our real trade in, uh, in NASDAQ, in our real trade in NASDAQ, put the stop at break even. Okay. Stop at break even in not in this scalp, okay? In the real trade in NASDAQ. So if you enter it at 20 or 17, your stop is at 20 or 17, whatever you, wherever your break even is, okay? Because we need to consolidate into the spot. And if we don't consolidate into the spot, we're not going anywhere. All right, let's read some momentum, guys. Who's in charge? Who was in charge right here? Bears or bulls? Where I have my cursor. Bears or bulls? Type it in the room. Bears or bulls? Bears. If we trade below this low right here, who's gonna be in charge? Who's gonna be in charge? And where's the momentum going to be? Bears, bears, bears. Awesome, guys, awesome. Good, good, good. Okay, as long as we're holding this interval between high and low, who's gonna be in charge? Nobody, right? Nobody's in charge, right? We need to pick up the high in order the, bull, in order the bulls to take charge. And if we trade below the low, the bears are gonna be in charge, okay? Uh, Michael, 11,370 support. We have the, the you, you mean a NASDAQ? The support is on the 15 minute. Here's the support. The low is actually uh, 67.75. So 67 is support right here. Okay. So we have a doji. Doji, right? Doji inside candle. Bearish below, bullish above, right? Bearish below, bullish above. That's how you read momentum. Okay, so the momentum is likely going to continue lower. Do you have any rotations? No. If you're caught in a trade, if you're caught in a trade, don't just exit just because you see red. Wait for a rotation and before you place a hard stop. Okay, wait for a rotation before you place a hard stop. All you have to do is wait one to two minutes because remember, this is scalp zip code. Scalp zip code. All right, so we're finding some kind of little support right here. And in fact, it's from the five minute chart because you can see it right here into the 20 SMA. Like I said, if it trades below 37, most likely we're gonna go to 29, 29. <laughs> Scalp zip code, yeah, that's funny. Okay, um, laughing at my own jokes, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, rotation, rotation, uh, 39, 39, 39 right here on the two minute. Let's everybody add into the 39. Okay. This is Momo, Momo, Momo. Okay. 39, 39 is going to be an ad. 39 is going to be an ad for this example trade, okay, for this example trade. So you're basically, what you want to do is you want to be one with price and do whatever the price is telling you to do, okay? You read the price. All right, so you can see it right here. If we're getting over this two minute and if you're a more aggressive scalper into this five minute, oops, sorry about that, into, where, okay, here we go. Into this five minute, the five minute can be an ad. Okay, we got filled. Uh, the five minute can be an ad into the 45. So it gets into the 45. We, on, we wanna add, because let's say you get bored, you wanna get out of the trade a little bit faster. And let's say you wanna add a little bit more at 45, at the five minute rotation. So now you go back to the two, okay? So you wanna, 
So who's in charge right here, guys? We have the rotation, okay? We have the rotation. So now if you wanna put in a hard stop and say, hey, I'm done for the day, I really don't wanna trade anymore, you could put in a hard stop. But if you're in the red, you wanna work the trade out, okay? You wanna work the trade out. So you had a little two minute rotation, which is really not reliable. And I don't, I don't recommend that you do this at this time at 1130, because the two minute is not gonna work out at this time. Okay, there are other time frames that are going to work five minute. So five minute is the ad here. Okay, based on this doji rotation off of the 20 SMA, this is going to be the higher odd type of trade into the 40s. And then we're looking for a target into that 70s spot. Okay, but when you're trading, you're always looking who is in charge. Is it the bulls, is it the bears, the buyers, the sellers? And you, uh, and you pretty much gauge uh, what the momentum is based on candlestick price action. Okay. So now we have this candle right here. This is a two minute. This is a two minute low into the 25. What, what guys, what do you think it's going to happen if we break below 25, 75? One take below 25, 75, what's going to happen? One tip below. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The bears. Exactly. The bears are going to win. And where are they going to go? We're going to take the price. 420. Why 420? 20 SMA and plus we do have that 420 spot. Exactly. So now you can see that we have pretty much a Christmas light effect here. What do we need now? You look at the time. It's 11.22.43. Okay. You have about 50, 10 seconds into the next one minute candle. So you have the one minute candle right here. Okay, you either take out this high of 36 and a half or you're going to have an inside candle right now. Ramp it up. Brand new candle for me right now on the one minute. Okay, brand new candle. Take a look. My timing for the, uh, for the SIM account is de delayed somehow. Isn't it real time? I don't know. Okay, so you're seeing it continuation higher. Continuation higher, Gucci sandwich, exactly, Gucci sandwich, exactly. All right, so we need to get over this spot. Always, so pay attention to price action, pay attention to what the price is telling you. Plus, remember that the most important thing is to pay attention not only to price action reaction, but also pay attention to what's happening with resistance and uh, uh, support spots, because this is a massive resistance here into the 40s. Massive, 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 massive into the 40. Okay, massive into the 40. Okay. Um, all right, so who's in charge right now, guys? This is a one minute. This is a one minute. Remember, we do have, here it is, brand new candle. If we trade over this high, if we see a print of 38, where are we gonna go? Straight to, if we print 38, we're gonna go straight to 40, okay? Okay, the green dots are pivot points. The green dots are pivot points. If we take on the low, who's gonna be in charge, guys? If we take out this low right here of 32? No, they come with every platform, they're free. Okay, bears, that's right, that's right, that's right. So where do you think the bears are gonna take the price if the bears are gonna take charge of this domain? They're gonna take it back to 26 and this is gonna be the decision point again, okay? Decision point again. All right, so what's the time? It's 11, 24, 50, we have 10 seconds to the 25 and we, got, we are going to get a brand new candle brand new candle on the five minute. So we're going to watch this. Okay. Watch this. Okay. Watch this candle. We just, we're just broke slightly below it. This is going to be tough because we do have a lot of moving averages right here. We have the 20 and we have the 10. We have another candle from support here right into the 420s right? We have a lot of support right here. So let's just watch it. If we trade, and again, this is on a five minute segment. If we trade right now above, you're always measuring, okay? You're always measuring. Uh, if we break right now above 40, not 45. So what we need right now is 40. We're going to move higher. So what do we do? We cancel this, we go into 40 and we replace an order at 40. Okay. At 40, we go here, bam, at 40. 
because this is going, if we trade in within the next five minutes into the London session close above 40, we're gonna take off higher. And I don't recommend you scalp going exactly into um, the London session close. Okay, don't do it. Uh, red and blue lines. Oh, these ones right here. These are moving averages, Charlie. Um, this, uh, the red is the 10 exponential moving average and the blue is the 20 simple moving average. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Let's go back to the scalper Rooney time frame. What do we have here? Christmas light effect. We break over 40, then it's obvious we're going to pop up higher. Where's the pop-up zone? Back into the 50s. That's our target one again. Yeah, sure. Ask away, guys. Good time for scalping is in the morning, uh, usually between uh, 9.45 and 11, 11, 10 at the most, 11, 10 at the most. After 11, 10, and especially 11, 15 to 11, 30, it's terrible because you're getting closer to the London session closing. You don't know if there's going to be accumulation or dump into this, uh, into this uh, time frame. Very, very difficult very difficult to scalp or to trade. I am usually done at 11 o'clock. I don't like, that's why I said, let's do some simulated trades and let me teach you how to scalp because uh, it, is, um, it is very hard to trade around this time because there are a lot of unknowns. And especially today, we have the first day of FOMC. We have quadruple witching option expiration. We have the FOMC meeting tomorrow. It's going to be a chop fest, literally a chop fest. We're getting more pullbacks into the down. And also guys, you're watching the chart that you're trading, but your eyes should be on the screen where you have the watch list. Always. You always have to watch uh, Russell's behavior, S&P and, uh, and the Dow's behavior. Okay, you always have to watch them because if you don't watch them, you know, it, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem because you need to know where these rotations are happening because they're more or less, they're all correlated. So once one index hits support, it's going to, it's going to have a bounce. And if you are not going to be right on and spot on with your trailing, because maybe you want to trail, right? That's going to be a problem. Okay. So uh, we triggered, okay, now we're with three contracts. Uh, this is the target into, into the 50 spot. So we need to go step by step. First, we need to get into the, 20, uh, into the 44, then we need to go into the 50. But all we do is read Momo, right? Read momentum. We're going back to the one minute, okay? We're going back to the one minute. And by the way, Russell, messy, down. S&P, messy, down. YM, messy, down. The only index is... NASDAQ, right? Only index is NASDAQ. And we're moving on, we're moving on, we're moving on. Remember, ultimate target, Scalparuni target is going to be 50, okay? And you can take the decision and when the price gets into 50, what you need to do. So the, the reason why I'm talking so fast right now is because when you're trading, your, mo your brain should go a thousand miles an hour with scenarios, what you need to do, where you need to put the price, so every time your brain has to work extra hard when you're scalping, okay? All right. Any questions? Any questions about scalping and the examples that we're doing right now? By the way, by the way, all right, a 15 minute, okay, 15 minute. Oops, sorry about that. Take a look at the 15 minute right here. What's the high? We're reading momentum on all time frames. What's the high? 45, right? 44 and a quarter, okay? If we trade over 45, what do you think is gonna happen? 50 is gonna be in the books, right? 50 is gonna be in the books, all right? And this is tiring. So scalping is very tiring. Scalping is very tiring. I used to do a lot of scalping, not on the mic. I was trading for myself. 
you know, I was doing it with stocks and I was doing it with the uh, mic with the micros, God, with the e minis, uh, with the futures. Um, before I actually, you know, received like so many emails, like literally so many emails and like come up with a swing with, um, uh, with a day trading course for futures. I was like, we really only had the swing trading course. We had swing trading plans. We had, um, you know, everything swing trading for stocks, but we didn't have anything for futures. And I love to trade. I love to scalp, but not, you know, at where I am right now in my trading career, I don't want to put any pressure on myself. Do I know how to do it? Perfect example right here. Yes, I do know how to do it, but, it, but it's very tiring. I do not see myself doing this. So I'd much rather, you know, wait for really good solid examples than try to work the trade out. By the way, we're into the 50s. Make sure you adjust the size and make sure you put a trail stop into the 50s, uh, into the 50, because that was your ultimate goal right here. Okay, so put it right here. So if it takes you out, you're gonna trail it. Let's go to the one minute, okay? And we're still seeing the momentum intact. Look at the time, the trade is still active. So from this point on, everything that you are making above this time frame is pure bonus, pure bonus, okay? All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Can somebody tell me what the momentum is right now? And by the way, the in our real trade, the next target is 60 and then we're having the 70, okay? Real target into 60 and into the 70. All right, so one minute Momo is up, 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 up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, at this point, what I wanna do is, if you wanna offer some out, if you wanna offer some out, let's say at 60, all right, or just below 60, okay? Make sure you adjust, make sure you adjust and you offer out one at 60, let's say. You wanna offer a one at 60. If you wanna offer it out, if you wanna sell it, okay? If you wanna sell, if not, my preference is to trail the whole shebang right now, to trail the whole thing, okay? So I'm still at 50, I still wanna give myself a chance Still want to give myself a chance. I would much rather, uh, you know, but if you want to offer out, because a lot of times I do offer out a lot, okay? Offer out at 60 or around 60. Uh, sometimes institutions like to, um, uh, institutions like to take their profits just a little bit below the targets, okay? So can somebody tell me what is the, what is the momentum right now? Let's talk Momo, it's a one minute guys. If we trade over 59, boom, we're gonna hit 60, okay? We have 59.6, we're almost, uh, we're right into that target three, I mean, come on. Beautiful, doji, careful. If the trade's below 54, it's gonna go back. So see here, when you're scalping, you're not talking, you're not trying to explain to someone how to do it, and you're right on, you do it this, you do that, you, you're, on the flatten, okay? Or you just keep your stop right here at 50, whatever you wanna do. By the way, guys, in our real trade, trail 50. Trail 50 in our real trade. Trail 50 in our real trade. Real trade, the one that I called at 11 o'clock. Okay, you trail 50. Trail 50. All right, and we're still on with the momentum. So it's not as much about freaking out about where to put the stop. It's about trading with the momentum, okay? Tra trading with the momentum. And this is how you gain confidence. This is, this is exactly what we teach in day one of our course, how to read this momentum through candlesticks, which is the most important part of trading. Okay, and then comes technical analysis because you need to know exactly where to buy and where to sell with confirmation, okay? And let's see what else we have. All right, momentum, momentum, momentum. 50 is the stop. Who's in charge right here? Who's in charge right here? We have a topping tail. 
I'm noticing that my simulated account is delayed, uh, uh, delayed compared to the uh, to 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 my real account. Okay, perfect, Ta. Perfect. All right. So here it is. We have a doji. Guess what's going to happen now? We break over sixty. We're going to go higher. We break below fifty. We're going to be out. Doji gal, your sim is identical and think or swim. Mine is not. Mine is not 54 right now. The real account is 53, 25, 54 right now, 53 in the real. Um, it says real data, real time data. It says real time data. All right, 51. See, now my, my real account is that 50, 75. Okay, done. Okay. And this is how you scalp. This is how you scalp. And by the way, we trailed out of the real deal. Okay. This is it, guys. All right. And by the way, oil, 30-minute rotation oil helped tremendously. When oil is happy, the market is happy. Oil, happy, oil, happy. Okay. Let, let's just switch to... All right. Yeah, just just a very, 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 very uh, slight. Yeah. So basically, you could scalp on your own. Always. <laughs> I know exactly. So it's intense. Okay, it's intense. Okay, so guys, I have recorded this session. Okay, I have recorded the session. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna send it to you. So I'm trailed out of that NASDAQ at 50. Okay, I'm trailed out at 50, so not, not a bad day today. Okay, sure, Ta, sure. It's very fast paced. We may do it again on Friday if the momentum is gonna be right, okay? Outside of our regular, <laughs> our regular trading. Okay. Whew, that was intense. Yeah, I will definitely send you guys the recording. Definitely. Okay. Um, I'll post it in the tw uh, in our Twitter feed. I'll post it on our Twitter feed. But definitely, that's how you read momentum. That's why. So you don't freak out when the price is going against you. You have your levels. You know exactly what you're looking for. You know that when a pullback and the momentum is going to start, in the on the reverse side you know how to read it you know that if it goes down 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 you have to wait for a rotation you're not just exiting just because you see red it's the worst thing that you could do for your account okay all right guys this is pretty much it let's wrap it up here and let's see what we have going on i'm going to take it back to the one hour charts and let uh i'm not going to give you some ideas for the afternoon session and what to look for um and again, I'm going to look tonight to see if we are getting a, uh, if we're getting some setups, because like I said, you know, uh, with the Dow yesterday, you know, it was a, was a little bit of frustrating, you know, time with it because it wasn't doing anything. And by the way, the indices are not doing anything either, are not doing much now. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean, we had, you know, um, yeah, Lori, exactly. So the reason why I don't want to put hard stops in, even though I know where my area is, is because any broker on this planet is selling your information. I think there's one, I think Fidelity is not, uh, is not um, selling, uh, selling, uh, selling uh, the entries and the stops, in. but all the other brokers out there are selling everything. Okay, they're, they're selling everything. Okay, so Nazi is doing a sandwich on the one hour. You can expect a continuation higher over 75. In the m and &E SMP, we have a doji. So what, what do you think is going to happen, guys, here in the next hour? What do you think is going to happen here in the next hour? We had a doji from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. You guys, you guys are going to tell me. I'm not going to tell you because you know. You know what's going to happen. Okay, I zoomed it out. So what is this? A doji. What is this candle right here? It's a doji inside a high and a low. So what do you think it's going to happen if it breaks above the high? Where do you think it's going to go? So what's the high here? 
Oh, 7.75. So if it trades over this high, exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, it goes higher. Okay, it's going to go higher. What do you think it's gonna happen if it breaks below 3401? Where's it gonna go? Where's it gonna go? Lower. Where to? Where to? Where to? I'm not showing you. Where do you think it's gonna go? Is it gonna be like a suit? Anna, you got it. 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 You guys got it. You guys got it. You guys got it. Right on, Paul. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on, Lori. Perfect. <laughs> you guys got it. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay. So what do you think is going to happen with, what do you think it's going to happen with YM? What do you think is going to happen with YM? If it trades over this doji high right here. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to go. There are two steps right here. It's going to go into these prior highs. This is going to go back into this resistance spot. Exactly. 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 So trading is not hard, but sometimes it's hard because when you don't have the momentum. If you don't have the momentum, trading totally sucks, especially when they're calibrating because sometimes the indices need to form their you know, they need to get their mojo. So obviously this morning they were not really set for the mojo because you see what happened. Up, and by the way, when you're scalping, you could take short or long. Uh, so you could go against the trend when you're scalping, but you gotta make sure like you're in, out. And there's, obviously you need to know, you know, where your hypothetical stop is. But here's the thing, you need to, when you're scalping, uh, you need to use a very small size very small size because you may add to the trade three to four times at least three to four times within the scalp because you need to go with the momentum you need to have a per permanent flow of the momentum okay all right guys so i was saying for the pm session i don't have high expectations i think that going into this afternoon and going into uh, tomorrow trading is going to be a total chop fest uh, because of the fomc meeting and I don't see anything like really happening in particular. Uh, let's go back here to the one hour. Uh, and uh, uh, because they're still trading off, you know, really high time frames, pay attention to what the momentum and where the momentum is guiding you. Now you know. Okay. So pay attention if you want to scalp smaller time frames. Look at support resistance spots and look for continuations from that spot, those spots or uh, corrections from that spots or even pullbacks from that spot, from those spots. Okay, guys, this is a wrap for today. Uh, I'm really glad that I recorded today's uh, session and uh, I will uh, send you guys, uh, I will send you guys the uh, recording on the private feed. Jerry, you received a warning from TD Ameritrade about being a day trader. I haven't received a warning from them. And what are they saying? Can, can, you, can you share more information about what's in the email? I haven't received anything. Or if I did this morning, I didn't check my email because I was trading. Stop your trades. Stop your trade. Why, Jerry? For 90 days? Why do they? Are you guys aware of anything like this? Like, Jerry, why? Why did they do this? Anyone else received a warning? No. Oh, pattern day trader. Are you day trading stocks as well? Oh, okay. You're trading stocks as well. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's just for the pattern trader. It's just for the stock trader. Just for the pattern stock trader. Okay, okay, good. Thank you for sharing it with the room. I was a little bit confused. Phew, exactly. Yeah, no worries. But you can call them and make sure that this is it or they didn't do them by accident. 
And jelly, I know Trey Station, I don't like it. It totally sucks for me because they don't have, they have, they have different pivots. They have totally different pivots. They have totally different pivots. They are the only platform that are, that are using like totally wild stuff. Like I used to be with Trey Station, but a long time ago, I had a very hard time figuring it out and, you know, having a good setup for my screen. So I ditched it. I'm like, forget about it. So I still had, I had a lot of accounts in different places. Like back when F, uh, um, back when uh, F, what is, what is that? FXCM, before FXCM went down, uh, I had an account with them. And then I consolidated because I was trading currencies as well. Uh, and I consult when, when I listen, when I didn't have the trading room, I was trading anything on the planet. I was trading, like I was looking at stuff and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to trade today. I'm going to trade the Euro tomorrow. I may trade a, a day trade a stock. I mean, day trade Apple. And then I would put a swing trade. I have more Liberty than I have now. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm going to work. I'm only going to trade the futures indices. And that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so, uh, the, the trade station does not have, uh, if you, uh, look hard enough on the internet, you're going to have, uh, you're going to find, um, a pivot point indicator. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure, but I think, I think you do. When, when I had trade station like years ago, I think it was like five, six years, six years ago. Uh, they were not available. So that's why I said, goodbye, trade station. Goodbye, trade station. So, um, but what you can do is uh, you can have uh, the charts from, uh, from, TD, from TD Ameritrade and just execute the orders on trade station. You just have to fund a little bit into, uh, into the Thinkorswim platform so you can have, get real-time data, like 500 bucks or something. And then you can get, you can trade anything. We have traders uh of course jerry feel free to email me um you have uh we have traders in this room that are using interactive brokers because they have very low commissions for futures and they just execute the trades uh into interactive brokers but they use td ameritrade for charting okay all right guys this is it for today uh i'll see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock and uh have a great rest of the day. See you tomorrow. And stay safe with the FOMC, guys. It's going to be very, very tricky. Laurie, light bulb. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to turn on the light. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'm too jealous about these light bulbs. Too jealous. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.